Well, I probably should have written a book. I might have let down a lot of people in not doing so. One of the sins of omission, please, Lord Jesus, forgive me, that I hope I am forgiven for. Um, I'm going to talk to you about Terry Schiavo and Jeb Bush a little bit today, but many of you may know my history in this saga, and many of you may not, so I'm going to give you a brief history. If you look back, if you do research on Terry Schiavo, you will see my name. You'll see my name all over the place. And this leads to why I really don't like Jeb Bush. Uh, what happened was in 2003, if my memory is correct, um, the, the family of Terry Schiavo contacted me through an a intermediary, through a common friend. And this man said, look, you've got to go down. You've got to help. There's this woman named Terry Schiavo who's about to be starved to death. And I said, I'm sorry, I don't know who you're talking about. I've never heard of this. So he gave me the background. And I said, I, I will, I'll happily go down, but I'll only go down if I'm invited by the family. So I was put in touch with the father of the family, Robert Schindler, Terry's dad. And he said, I give you carte blanche. Please do whatever you can to save our daughter. So an associate of mine and I, Gary McCullough, we drove, we, I lived in St. Augustine at the time, and we drove over to Pinellas County on the other side of the state near St. Petersburg, Florida. <clears throat> and we sat down with the family and maybe 10 or 15 of their friends and associates. And, and Terry's starvation was going to begin in a matter of days. So we talked and I had created a list of 10 things that we were going to do to ensure that her, her daughter's that their daughter's plight would be made known to the country. And I explained to them, I said, listen, I'm, I'm Randall Terry, I'm the founder of Operation Rescue. The secular press is going to pay attention to this more than likely because I'm here, I'm on the ground. And at that time, my notoriety as a pro-life leader was still pretty extensive and it worked. And I said, we're gonna rent a, a little trailer and put it here as our command you know, headquarters right across the street from the from the nursing home where Terry, or the hospice where Terry was being held. So, and, and while we were taking a break, uh, Mr. Schindler said to me, we have a tape, a video. I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, it's in a safe. And I, I said, what are you talking about? He said, well, we snuck a video camera into our daughter's room and took video footage of her following a balloon and interacting with us. Now you'll remember that footage, okay? You remember seeing that footage on TV? I said, you've got to be kidding me. Well, let's use it. He said, well, the judge told us we were not allowed to take f footage of her, pictures of her whatsoever. So I'd be, I'll, be, I'll be in violation of a court order. I said, the very best thing that can happen to your daughter is if you are put in jail for releasing video footage of her not being brain dead. You'll be here overnight and you, your daughter will live. So we got the footage. We made 10 or 15 copies for the press. We had one of our many press conferences in front of the hospice. And at that time, it, it was growing, okay? And we, we prevailed. We created a, a, a large firestorm we had protests starting to happen around Florida. CNN was on the ground there. Jeb Bush was coming nearby through town, and I said to the family, I said, trust me, he'll meet with you. Okay? He will meet with you. So let's go over there, and let's have a presence at this political meeting. We called up his office and said, we're going to be there, and, and they said the governor would, would be happy to meet with you. So if you look at the picture, the New York, or I believe it was Newsday, or Newsweek, had a cover photograph of Jeb Bush emerging from the building. There was Mr. Schindler, there was, um, I think, Susie, his daughter, and I believe his mom, and me, all right? We were in a meeting. It was me, Governor Bush, mom and dad Schindler, and I believe uh, Susie, his sister, and Bobby, the son, might have been there as well. So we were in the meeting, just pressing him, saying, look, you're the governor of the state. You have the rule of law to intervene. And he said, well, 
give me some memorandum, give me some legal background, then I'll consider it. I'll tell you more when we come back. You have two choices. I mean, you can try to raise your children by design, or you will raise them by default. There are no perfect parents. We're going to get it wrong sometimes. If we have a plan, we've got a better chance of getting it right in the long run. There is something deep within the heart of every human being that longs for parental acceptance and approval. When does a boy become a man? Get a group of guys around and ask them that question. I don't think there's a certain age. Some men stay boys their whole life. I would say, uh, what? 16, 18 years old. Wow, that's a good question. When they get bar mitzvah? Well, I think when he has a child. So I just became at 56, yeah, 56 years old. Without the power of the Holy Spirit changing us and giving us power over our sin, we can't hope to be the dads that our kids need us to be. 